佩洛西众议长如果赴台，将是对中国内政的粗暴干涉，严重损害中国主权和领土完整，肆意践踏一个中国原则，严重威胁台海和平稳定，严重破坏中美关系，导致非常严重的事态。和后果，我们要再次正告美方，中方正严阵以待，中国人民解放军绝不会坐视不管，中方必将采取坚决应对和有力反制措施，捍卫自身主权和领土完整。美方。应该做的是，恪守一个中国原则和中美三个联合公报规定，兑现拜登总统不支持台独的承诺，不得安排佩洛西访台。如果佩洛西众议长访问台湾，中方必将采取坚决应对和有力的反制措施，捍卫。自身的主权和领土完整。至于是什么措施，如果他敢去，那就让我们拭目以待吧。Now on Taiwan, I know that's on、uh, everybody's mind today. I want to reaffirm that the speaker has not confirmed any travel plans. And it is for the speaker to do so, and her staff. So we won't be commenting or speculating about、um, the, the stops on her trip. We have been clear from the very beginning that she will make her own decisions, and that Congress is an independent branch of government. Our Constitution embeds the separation of powers. This is well known to the PRC, given our more than four decades of diplomatic relations. The speaker has the right to visit Taiwan, and the Speaker of the House has visited Taiwan before without incident. As have many members of Congress, including this year.、Now、the world has seen the United States government be very clear that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed about our one-China policy, which is, of course, guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three joint U.S. PRC communiques, and the six assurances. We have said, and we have repeatedly said, that we oppose any unilateral changes to the status quo from either side. We have said that we do not support Taiwan independence, and we have said that we expect cross-strait differences to be resolved by peaceful means. We have communicated this directly to the PRC at the highest levels, including as recently as last week in the phone call between President Biden and President Xi. Put simply, there is no reason for Beijing to turn a potential visit consistent with long-standing U.S. policy. Into some sort of crisis or conflict, or use it as a pretext to increase aggressive military activity in or around the Taiwan Strait. And yet, over the weekend, even before Speaker Pelosi arrived in the region, China conducted a live fire exercise. China appears to be positioning itself to potentially take further steps in the coming days, and perhaps over longer time horizons. Now, these potential steps from China could include military provocations, such as firing missiles in the Taiwan Strait or around Taiwan, operations that break historical norms, such as large-scale air entry into Taiwan's air defense identification zone (ADIS). I think you all know that acronym. Air or naval activities that cross the median line, and military exercises that could be highly publicized. This could also include actions in the diplomatic and economic space, such as further spurious legal claims by Beijing's public assertions last month. Or, I'm sorry, like Beijing's、uh, public assertions last month that the Taiwan Strait is not an international waterway. We, and countries around the world, believe escalation serves no one. Beijing's actions could have unintended consequences that only serve to increase tensions. Meanwhile, our actions are not threatening. And they break no new ground. Nothing about this potential visit, potential visit, which, oh by the way, has precedent, would change the status quo. And the world should reject any PRC effort 
to use it to do so. We will not take the bait or engage in saber rattling. At the same time, we will not be intimidated. We will keep operating in the seas and the skies of the Western Pacific as we have for decades. We will continue to support cross-strait peace, stability, support Taiwan, of course, defend a free and open Indo-Pacific, and we're still going to seek to maintain lines of communication with Beijing. All of that is important, and all of that, all of it, is preserving the status quo. We expect to see Beijing continue to use inflammatory rhetoric and disinformation in the coming days. The United States, by contrast, will act with transparency. We'll stand up here, we'll answer your questions, we'll give you the facts. We are also committed to keeping open lines of communication with Beijing, as I said. This is what the world expects of not just the United States, but of China. And we encourage Beijing to keep that commitment as well.